Good evening, everyone. Now I welcome you all. Thanks for finding time and attending today's webinar on geometrical constructions, the virtual beam, which is a very crucial topic and a challenging one also. Because I guess due to the pandemic situation and online classes, most of the you are facing problem in teaching maths. So today, Sneha Malik Ma'am is with us. She will guide us how to deal with it. Now I want to introduce my trusted teacher dot com. It's a marketplace for teachers, professions, and all kind of institutions. Our mission is to make quality education available easily and affordable to all. Our speaker Sneha Malik Ma'am is a mathematics educator and trainer by profession. She has been associated with the reputed schools of Delhi and have undertaken various roles of teaching, curriculum planning, peer training, coordinating and mentoring in technology for over a decade. She has been training middle school and high school teachers about the various aspects of teaching in general and mathematics in particular. She is the founder of Learning Simplified, an academy that caters to personal mentoring of students. She is an also involved and associated with various educational platforms for content creation as SME and for academic tutoring too. Ma'am, your profile is really amazing. Over to you, ma'am. Okay, thank you so much, Radhika, for introducing me to the platform. A uh, very good evening to all of you. I am Sneha, as I've been already introduced by Radhika so well. I will be taking this teacher training webinar today on geometrical constructions, the virtual way. So let's begin without wasting any time because as you all know, we have a lot to discuss and the time frame is limited, right? So let's move on. So first is to know me. Right. So Radhika has already introduced me and let me just tell you again from my own words that I am a mathematics educator and for the past decade I've been teaching mathematics to students, especially constructions without any use of instruments uh, in my class. So I've not taken any physical instruments ever to my class and I've just used technology with them. And now, since we have transformed to online teaching environment, I will be very delighted to share this. This webinar today will not only be applicable to online teaching, but it will also be applicable to offline mode once you go back and meet students face to face. So this is something that is learning for life. It is not limited to one phase. It's, it can be applied anytime. So we just have to train ourselves with ample number of tools available online. Right. So let's begin. Okay, dear teachers, here are some aspects of teaching that we usually encounter. So I have tried my best to, you know, teaching is a huge umbrella under which a lot of aspects fall. So I've tried my best to accommodate most of them. So it's engaging them, developing background knowledge, collaborating. So we give participants and the students an opportunity to work with each other. Right now, we also have a lot of collaborative platforms in which we are working with them real time. We also have organizational skills. So we have LMSs which are used to organize whatever we are giving to our students. We are synthesizing their knowledge in the form of all the things that we have done, like Google Sites. We are having playlists in our YouTube channels. Similarly, teaching our content. This is the most important part of transaction of whatever we are trying to do. So this teaching our content, we'll be trying and focusing much more in this webinar. Assessing, how do we assess them? There are a lot of tools to assess our students. Going multidisciplinary. So if once we learn constructions, it is not only limited to mathematics, but it is also applicable to science. Uh, maybe you use ray diagrams, lenses, convex lens, um, you know, concave lenses. In social sciences, we have circles, pie charts. Again, we have a lot of tools available with us, which are not only limited to mathematics. So it's useful for all of us and we should 
share it with the other teachers also which are not even of this background but it's surely applicable to their content of delivery too okay so teachers what we'll do right now is um we'll break the ice right so we are not talking to each other but we can be interacting with each other so i want all of you to do something it's a famous quote by john hold that we learn to do something by doing it there is no other way at all so let's do something and let's explore one more tool which can be used with our students too by this time i am sure that all of you are comfortable in you know multitasking so whether you are on your laptop or you are on your phones you know how to open up another browser you know how to be on two screens i'll be on the same zoom right so let us first discuss what we are already doing so i am not taking a poll on zoom let's see what i'm doing i want all the teachers to open another browser a tab in your laptop or another browser window in your phone use the browser address use the address as www.menti.com so it's here this one www.menti.com and put the code as 61559866 i repeat i want all the teachers to another open another browser www.menti.com it's here right so i repeat www.menti.com and use the code 155986 correct so i hope you are able to see the results also the first question says what online tools have you been using for teaching students before the pandemic please focus on before the pandemic how many tools were you using before the pandemic okay so i'm very happy that there were kahoot use usage there was kahoot usage before the pandemic also i believe ed puzzle and all got famous during the pandemic so we have zoom the teachers the question is before the pandemic right youtube videos i can accept because we all were using youtube videos whatsapp for maybe broadcasting some messages to students okay geogebra for explaining concepts some wrote none so i am very happy that somebody wrote no none so they were not using anything before the pandemic so they were not into online teaching and maybe it was chalk and talk youtube okay we have teamy teamy is an lms so it's a learning management system where we have it's a facebook kind of an interface whiteboard ppt is very good practical way correct because we used to demonstrate things in the class itself be it a science experiment be it a mathematical activity so all these things were used right so good and so teachers do you see in this in this tool what we are able to do we are able to make up a mind map kind of a thing or a you know we are able to consolidate all the ideas in the form of a word wall fine so we have word walls in english where vocabulary is used here some mathematical ways are being used to create a word wall so we can use this as an introductory thing to find out and some terms used in mathematics ms excel wonderful okay so next now let's go to the next question and now you have something on your screen again what new tools have you started using for teaching online what are the new things that you've learned during this pandemic and in fact you've been forced to learn these things because it is the need of the hour we have to deliver something to the students so you have three options you can write it let me see what do we get 
Okay, quizzes, Jamboard, Microsoft Board, G Suite, all the tools associated with G Suite, MS Teams, so all the tools associated with Teams, PPTs, so PowerPoints, Google Slides, with our activity on Mentimeter, and we saw a lot of tools we learned. So we know why we have to see new tools because mathematics is an abstract subject, right? And ICT has made a lot of concepts visual. So professional development will help us teaching in an effective manner. And online software tools will access, accelerate and concretize your interest to teach the abstract concepts effectively. So first we'll talk about these five tools today for constructions. So the very first one is videos. We all know what videos are all about. So we will not be talking about them much because this is the most convenient way for teaching constructions, right? So how to assign videos, you can assign it to your Google Classroom or you can give them through your Snapchat or Snap Homework. You can give them through your WhatsApp groups. How do you assign them? You can make it on your Google Sites. But one important part is that you should always take a follow up of the video, right? Because whatever they do, what they learn, have to respond to the questions based on it so that we so that we hear so that we understand what has been taught to them through the videos. Flipgrid is also an important way or it is an interesting tool in which short videos of your learnings can be shared with each other. So this is an entire PD in itself again. So we'll not be talking about Flipgrid today. So I'm sure videos is something that we all have been using. In fact, we can make videos through, you know, IB webcam in our phones and make it a document camera and teach live constructions through the pen and paper, and students can see it through your phone. You can make your phone as a document camera, right? Now, second part or the second tool that we are going to discuss today is Wisnos. So manipulatives are something that we all have been using in the mathematics classroom, be it Dean's block, be it fraction kits, be it geometrical construction tools. These are all manipulatives that we have been using. And now we'll be talking about some virtual manipulatives. So a very basic virtual manipulative is available at Wisnos. So Wisnos is, you know, a, a manipulative which teaches something through an illustrative and interactive graphic. Fine. So if a child can form a clear mental picture of what the construction looks like, you're not just speaking in air, you have to demonstrate every step. So Wisnos can be used for teaching uh, construction of angles, measurement of angles at a very basic level. So when we start with angles, Wisnos is something that will help you. Okay, so there are interactive demonstrations at Wisnos. So the whole class can be shown from one screen to the other, right? And for smaller groups, you can just take your laptop to the classroom and show it in, uh, in on your PC also. Fine. So the activities currently available at Wisnos are construction, uh, measurement of angles, even constructions we cannot do. So we'll explore this right now. And it's, is, it is available in an app form also. So Wisnos can be installed giving the app like a desktop experience. So there are new resources that are being added on a regular basis. So once you go off and on to this website, you'll be able to see what new things have been added in it. So let's try and explore it here. Okay, so this is how the home screen of Wisnos looks like. So this is the demos. There are blogs about it. So we'll click on demos. Okay, as soon as we click on demos, you get these as the virtual manipulative view. So the one available on angles, which we can use during constructions, is basic angles here. So what we'll do is we'll click on launch. So once we click on launch, this is something that we see, right? So you can share this screen with your students while presenting. 
So what is this giving you an idea about? These are angles already made. So it is not giving you a feature of constructing angles because it's a manipulative. You can teach it through whatever is available. So these are the angles which are visible and there are many options. So you don't have to log in somewhere. One angle, maybe this dice, when you click on this, it will change the measurement of the angle. It will randomize the angle as per the option that you've chosen, right? So similarly, you can check point. So you can see angles at a point. You can change them. So you can play with them as per your own wish. And to show that uh, the sum of angles around a point is 360 degree, you can use this. You can hide all the measurements. And you can ask your students to measure the angles. You can ask them. You can equate all the angles. So when you equate all of them, you can ask what is the measure of each one of them. So these are all equal five angles. You can change the number of angles from here like this. You want them equal. This is what you can do. Similarly, you can see vertically opposite angles. So if you have to change, you can hide the angles or calculate. So if one is 57, you can ask the student to measure the other one. So this is something that the students can open on their own board also. They, they don't need anything from your side. They can explore on their own. So this will help them in using the protractor real time, right? So this is a protractor and suppose I just take one angle. Let me just take one for clarity and let's not go on a reflex angle first. So I'm randomizing and this is the angle and I'm asking them to calculate the angle. So on the protractor tool, which is available over here, you see two small pink boxes, uh, pink circles. So circle here, this circle, the rightmost circle is used for rotating the protractor. So if I try to rotate it, I'll put the baseline and I'll rotate it here, base on base. Now here, this is 60 degrees, right? This angle is 60 degrees and this is how they measure. But there is something which is not complete over here. If I change the angle like this, or something, maybe. Okay, so an obtuse angle. What I do is I'll use this big uh, pink circle to move it. I'll place it here, right here. Okay, so I am hiding the measurement and I'm asking them to find it out. Now do you see, is your protractor compatible with this kind of measurement? You see there's something which is not apt over here because in our protractor we usually have we usually have two point scales we have upper and inner semicircles right so what we'll do is we need to measure an obtuse angle so we will use this pink scale and we'll click on it it will reverse the scale and this is what we have to teach our students which scale to use when right so this is how they can use measurements so i repeat the first circle is used to rotate over it and the second circle what will it do it will shift the scales it will swap it so this is what has to be taught to the students so you can explore this on your own complementary angles supplementary angles you can randomize supplementary angles and you can get different pairs so every student can have his own pair of supplementary angles angles in supplementary, if you have to show on a straight line like this, so the sum of all of them is 180. So you can choose the number of angles from here as per your requirement. Okay, so we can go on and on, and this is all up to you how you use it. So I think this is good. I think we can go to the next tool. Right, so can we proceed to the next tool now? Right, so the next tool that we have is RoboCompass. So this web tool is a blessing to all of us. So let's try and see what is it all about. 
So RoboCampus is again a web tool that allows the user to make on-screen simulations. So it will give you a real-time construction made through simulations. We'll just have a look about it, right? In addition to the wealth of common constructions, the examples that are already available, you can add your own programs on RoboCampus, right? So they have a list of tools and commands that you can use very easily to program your own construction, fine? Based on IB, uh, IB syllabus, CBSC, IGCSC, any board, there is some construction which you find is not available. You can program it on your own, put it, you can even share it with those people and use it with your students. So already programmed geometrical shapes are there inbuilt in the software. And there's a user manual also, which gives you a complete look, complete explanation about how it has to be used. So we'll see that also right now. And it's exactly, it just replicates how you physically do a construction. So it's very clear on the blackboard we fumble a lot we children are not clear with whatever we are doing maybe the back benches are not able to see they miss a step but here they can just play the simulation again and replay it as many times as they want to find out what was done what happened what step got missed so it's very uh, student friendly also in fact, what I'll tell you one more thing. If you share this with your students, they will program a construction very quickly. So you can ask them as an assessing exercise also to program a construction, which you can use for assess, assessing something that you have already taught. Okay, so they are very good at programming. They'll pick up these things very soon. So let's try and explore RoboCampus. We'll again just touch on the basics because it can be a complete session in itself. Okay, so this is how the home screen looks like. You can just type RoboCampus on Google and you can come to this, this page. Uh, this is a blog about it. And here there are some tweets. There are already made videos in different languages about the construction. So this one which I found and I've used it with my class in 10th is how to construct a similar triangle according to a scale factor, right? So there are a lot of uh, constructions already available and you can make your own too, right? So let's try this out. So open compass, you will click on open robo compass. So it's opening, right? So this is how it looks like. First thing is that you can sign in with RoboCampus, maybe with your Gmail account, or you can create an account with them to save your work for whatever programming you're doing. But I'm not signing it right now. I'm just giving you a look and feel of this. So this is a grid view. You can have a 2D view of this like this. You can remove the grid and you can have just a plain paper. Let's do full screen. Yeah, like this. Okay, so this is suppose the paper available with you. So what we'll do is we'll just take an example which is already there. So you click on examples over here. Okay, so there are a lot of examples available. So I maybe let me take a very simple one, bisect an angle. So this is the final construction, how it looks like, okay? But how do you have to show it to the students? Let's go step by step. So these are the buttons of play, right? So if we play this, it is automatically timed and you can show it to the students like this. So you can speak side by side also, construct a line which bisects an angle is the aim, right? So this is our aim of the activity or the construction. So he'll start making an angle first. So everything will go side by side. You can show it to the students. So this tool, you need not hunt for a video. You can find it here also already made, these constructions. Draw an arc with center A of any radius. So he'll bring the compass tool over here, place it and drawing an arc. Now, if I have to stop it, I can use the pause button here so I can pause the construction and if I have to tell my students some very important points, I can 
add it over here so you can resume it as per your own will and once you resume he'll start working again and footnotes are available you know he's giving subtitles and he's giving instructions so the teacher can reinforce all these instructions so one suggestion is before making any you know before showing any construction first see the construction on your own is it as per the level of your students because there are different ways of doing a construction too right so it's better that you first research on your own what has to be shown and then only show the construction to the students right so one our lesson planning our exploration should be done and pre-planning should be perfect Right. So this is what he's done. He's bringing a, a protractor also. He's seeing and verifying his construction too. So this is what we also tell our students that you can verify your construction to be absolutely sure that the end product that you've received is correct. Okay. Uh, then we can replay it. Students can play it any number of times to recall the steps. Here on the right hand side, when you see how to, when you click on how to, these are the drawing commands that you can use to create your own program of construction. So this is on point, line, making a perpendicular line, parallel line. So he's given the explanation of these commands too. So I would, it will be a great exercise for the students also to program a construction. They will be very, very happy to do it. And I'm, I'm telling you, they'll go ahead of you and make the constructions for you. So you can take it out as an assessment activity too. Let them try. You can print these commands also because it is ready to refer any time. Right? So this is what we did about RoboCompass. There are a lot of things involved with this too, but we'll just touch the basics. Okay, so we are through with RoboCompass here. GeoGebra is our next tool. GeoGebra, I think most of you are already familiar with the illustrator over here. And this is really a blessing in disguise of your laptop and apps. So you can have it on your phone apps also. So GeoGebra is something that has been talked about a lot. And it is a complete training module in itself. So we'll just ch check how GeoGebra can be used for constructions. Okay, so it is a dynamic mathematics software for all levels of education that brings to me together geometry, algebra, spreadsheets, graphing, stats, calculus in one easy to use package. So it's going to 3D also. There are a lot of beautiful simulations in 3D also in GeoGebra. So you, the more you explore, the more you get comfortable with this software, the, beneficial, the more uh, you know, easy you will find this to be. So it's rapidly expanding and there are the community of GeoGebra, they're working very hard on applets. In fact, you can also make your own GeoGebra applets and share it with all to add on to the mathematics community. There are, million of, there are millions of users located around the world and GeoGebra is really, really becoming popular. So if you've started your training, I would say that do not stop with the training. There are a lot of training modules that keep on going in GeoGebra. I can also share a link with uh, the current, you know, the current um, training that is going on in GeoGebra. Even I'm attending the same. And uh, it's a dynamic software. So it supports your STEM education too. So it's, you know, it's very innovative and students once, if they are given a feel of GeoGebra, I'm telling you, they will come with things that you've never seen, right? So give them the opportunity to explore and teach them some basic tools. The rest they'll explore on their own. They are better than you, believe me. Okay, so it says explore and make your own. So we'll just explore today and making our applets, we can have another session on that. So there are a lot of applets already made. So we can explore GeoGebra in a very, sh you know, short span um, pertaining to our topic. I'm again not signing in. Otherwise, you can sign in. You can create your own class. You can invite your Google Classroom also. You can see children working real time as small screens on your laptop. So you can see all of them. It's completely, completely dynamic. And it's a collaborative tool too. But right now, we'll just stick to geometry. I've clicked on geometry over there. 
because I'm trying to use geometrical tools. Right, okay, so let me just choose a construction. Maybe there is a more. So on the left hand side, you have basic tools. Okay, so these are some construction tools, measurement tools, lines, different kinds, rays, vectors, segment, circles, polygons, transform, media. So you have to explore all of them one by one. And the beautiful part of it is sometimes some tools are self-explanatory. So, you know, they come with a brief description with them. So suppose if I say I'm making a construction of a circle and I just want to draw some tangents to it. So circle with a center. So the very first step, I'm demonstrating a construction to my students. So I'm doing it in front of them, right? So I just pick up a simple construction. So circle with a center. So this is a center and you make a circle, right? Then come on the cursor again because I want to deselect this tool. I don't want another circle with another center. So I've deselected by using this arrow button so that I can select another tool. Uh, the next step is that we need a point. Suppose we're drawing two tangents from an external point. So if I want a point, so let me find, here is a point. So I'll choose a point outside the circle anywhere here. So he's automatically labeling. Now I'll not click anywhere. If I click anywhere, he'll again give me points because the point tool is selected. So I don't want more points. I'll do undo. I click on the cursor so that I deselect that tool. So first you are selecting a tool and then you are deselecting a tool. Okay. I'll just come to uh, questions in a short while after I just complete this GeoGebra construction, right? So I have this, then I need to make a line segment to AC. So I'll choose segment. Segment C, on the bottom he's saying, select two points or positions because a segment is a part of a line with two endpoints. So he's saying select two points. So I'll click point A and point C, like this. And I click again so that I'm telling him starting point and the end point. If I would have gone from A to B, this would have been a radii or a radius of the circle, but I don't want that. So I'm removing this. Then A to C is a line segment. Then I have to draw a perpendicular bisector. So I'll choose the bisector tool. Find out where is it? C. Just have a look. Here is a perpendicular line and here is a perpendicular bisector. If I select this tool at the bottom again, see what is he saying? Select two points or one segment. So if I select a segment, AC, I clicked on AC, he has automatically drawn the bisector of AC. So if no, he's not shown through a compass. We'll be doing that through a compass also right now in next tool. But I'll repeat, I'll show again, see, undo. Perpendicular bisector, select two points or one segment. So two points, if I select A to C, I click on C again. So he has made the perpendicular bisector like this. So you can either select two points or you can select the line segment. He has made the perpendicular bisector. Right? Then next is that you have to construct another circle with the radius as maybe this, if you want to name this point. So if I name this point, let me see, I'll select point. Okay. And he's saying select the position or the curve. So I'll select this. When I select this, he has named that point so that it becomes easy for us to, you know, use it in our further constructions. Right. So now what is it? Next is the radius again, circle. So I'm finding my circle tool. Okay. Now, Circle with center would not do because I want a specific radius too. So I select this tool, circle with a particular center and radius. So I select this tool. Okay, he says select center point, of course, which is important to construct a circle and then enter the radius, right? So we we'll go to this center is D. 
and he's asking me to enter the radius. So maybe I can say radius is AD or CD. So see, he'll make a circle on his own like this, right? And then we know that this point and this point is actually the point of tangency. So I'll mark them again. I'll go up. I need to mark these points. So select the point tool, point, and point of intersection here. Okay. And there's another tool over here. If say, I'll, there's a point of intersection also. Okay, I'm not able to find it here. There's actually a point of intersection of two curves also. So here are tangents. Ready-made tool is also there, but we also want to show them how to make construct tangents. So this construction we are doing, this is the this is the working behind this tool actually. Otherwise, you could have directly made tangents, but we want to show them the procedure. Similarly, if we want, see here directly we made the perpendicular bisector. This was an inbuilt tool. But if we want to show them how to make a perpendicular bisector, then we'll have to use some other instruments. So we'll come to that too. Okay, so now I want to make a segment from C to E. So select two points. Again, I'll C, E, and then from C to F. I did not deselect segment because I wanted two segments. And I can say C, E, and C, F are the required tangents. Right. So there are regular, uh, there are ready made applets also made for this. So you can go to those applets, but you actually, if you want to show them, if you want to speak and you want to teach them how to do in front of you, you can do this as a demonstration. Fine. So GeoGebra, there are, the possibilities are unlimited. So you can explore them. I'll go to the screen. They are ready for tests, more apps. There is a 3D calculator. This is a classroom, so they can give them the class code. There are a lot of activities and resources already made. You can do them. You can explore them. You can give it to the students. So there's a lot of things that can be done. So we just had a glimpse of it. And let's come come back to our presentation. But before question of uh, on RoboCompass. So as I told you, there are uh, there are a set predefined commands that you can use. So those commands you have to study, right? You have to make your own program. That if I have a circle, then that means I have to define a point. Then I have to use the circle command to generate it. So you have to create your own structured set. So when you open RoboCompass and you see the simulation moving on its own. So at the side, on the left hand side, you will see a set of commands coming up, right? So that is a program that has been given to make that simulation, fine? So in that case, you will have to study those commands and program it. And there are ready-made simulations already available. In the list that I showed you, they were limited. But when you go to YouTube videos, there are a lot of videos made through RoboCompass. So I would, I was suggesting that you can create your own program. But if you're not comfortable in creating your own program, so let's go to another tool which will help us in which we don't have to do any programming. Okay, so that's our last tool for today. And I hope my connection is bearing with me. So that's called MathPad. OK, so this is actually for those who do not want to give commands and everything. So we can go to MathPad and we can do real time constructions as we do on the board. Fine. So let's explore MathPad first. And it's a wonderful tool. See, this is the MathPad website. So you can go to mathpad.co.uk. And this is something that you get in front of you. And it's actually a subscribed program too. But if you just have to use it, so you cannot, if you don't, if you use, you want it to use as an interactive tool. So on the right hand side, there's a constructions tool here. So you can go to this interactive tool here and click on it. This is something that you can again explore. Don't click on login because then it will ask you to subscribe because they're not free accounts here. So you can just use this as an interactive thing and share it as I'm doing it with you. So you every tool in itself requires exploration. So for basics, I'll show you something like you can show here a compass. This tool requires some working on. Otherwise, a protractor is easy to use. 
you know you can shift it here and there and it has a double scale already you can click on the protractor sign again to you know remove it this is the ruler here you can ups upside down here with this arrow tool you can move it here and there you know and when this black tool comes you can rotate it so click on this ruler again so you can do your constructions and this is how you have to you know you should have a fluency of hands so we we all ask our students to have ease in using mathematical equipments so we are very uh, you know quick in using the compass opening up the radius adjusting it and we are able to do the construction so a similar kind of ease and proficiency can be developed virtually too but then you just need practice right so you will get fluent with them so basically if i talk about the compass what we can do is see here this is how this leg of the compass is used to adjust the radius so you can as you get the hand tool adjust the radius once the radius is adjusted you click on this tool for locking it so that the radius now does not move ab dekho it's not moving the compass is moving but the radius is not this leg is used to navigate so you can take it from here to here and this upper part as you get get the black tool black is like for pencil so when you use this it will start sketching okay so let's do that same construction i made a circle right constructing tangents then i need a point outside so i'll use a line segment i can use any color if i want from one point to another i'm using a line segment then i'm using my pen so this is the pen tool you have to explore them one by one it's very easy to use once you get comfortable with it the line size so if you want a thinner line you can use pen tool for labeling a c so you can use this now you have to construct the perpendicular bisector so i am going on my compass right i am putting back the pen i don't want it now i click it back again and i'm now only with the compass so this leg is used for navigation right so you come here and now i have to adjust the radius so can anyone write it in the chat box what do i have to do i have to adjust the radius the radius should be more than half so i'll have to unlock it i'll expand the radius and lock it so this is how we always tell our students that the compass you know the radius should not move take a tight compass and everything right correct so here now i have to make so i'll first take it upwards somewhere yeah from this leg i took it upwards because i have to construct arcs and the black one now i'll click for making the arcs so like this right and i have to make an arc below also so i'll come to this line and i'll bring it here this is how you have to you know comfort make it comfortable and now come on the black tool to make an arc like this so you have to make yourself comfortable by using it now i have to use the left leg because i have to navigate the compass i have to change the center position from a to c so i'll pick it up from this leg and i'm not changing the radius i place it here but i need to change the direction so this leg i'll you know i'll use here like this i've changed the direction place the leg and the wonderful part is that even if your compass is loose or tight it doesn't matter because you have locked it virtually then you need to go to the pencil thoda sa hum isko niche leke aate hain and i start using my black tool to scribble right thoda sa upar leke jaate hain so this c now this is what is happening so you have to be comfortable with it here when you come again black tool and make it like this right now i don't need the compass as of now so i place it place it aside and i need to make a line segment so you can use a line tool i am changing the color so here color so that students every step they can differentiate that what is ma'am doing so from one point to the other see the line is moving i'll place it here right so this is how you can do all these things right and you can explore on your own so this is the compass tool click on the compass tool to place it back 
thickness lines this is your clear screen undo and clear is to remove an entire thing so this is where you can you know if you don't want to use robo compass and you have to show constructions live so you can use mathpad without subscribing so all tools that i've shown so far are you know free tools so these are our tools that we discussed and let's see some questions now okay right so i hope this tool will help you all to do constructions and it is uh, it is applicable for all the grades any one of you can use it fine and thank you so much for having us and i really appreciate all of you to be so patient with all the network problems